In this video, we're going to look at American Airlines Elite status, the benefits you get, a shortcut to get this, and also whether it's worth it. Their program has changed pretty dramatically over the past few years. Some people are going to hate it, while others will love it. Big favor, hit the like button to help with the algorithm, and if you are new, consider subscribing. As a starting point, American Airlines tracks their status with something called loyalty points. I probably will also use LP throughout the video. Loyalty points are different from redeemable advantage miles, so you can save those up and use them for some pretty great flights with partners like Cafe Pacific or Japan Airlines. So those are the miles. Loyalty points are meant as a tracker for status, and they restart every year. The elite qualification calendar runs from March of each year until February of next year. So for example, March 1st, 2024 until February 28th, 2025. Your status is based off the loyalty points earned during this period. There also are a few ways to earn these. If you're someone that flies basic economy, you're getting 2x of these loyalty points for every $1 spent on American airline flights. If you fly anything else that is not basic economy, you're getting 5x per dollar spent. It does need to be on American Airlines flights though. On top of that, you're getting a 40% to 120% boost if you have elite status. That means that you're getting 7x to 11x per dollar spent. You also can earn these on One World Partner Airlines, but it's almost stupidly complicated. It's based off the purchase fare, which affects the bonus miles, and you also get a cabin bonus. And that's before the bonus that you get for having elite status. They also have a lot of non-flight partner options. For example, booking dining on their platform, specific hotel portals and other partner ones, also car rentals through partners, with all of these varying a little bit. The most relevant option for people watching is probably credit cards. For every $1 you spend, you're getting one loyalty point. Also note that category bonuses do not apply, so if you get 2x on something like flights, you're only getting 1x loyalty point. Intro bonuses also do not count, and same thing with transferring points or buying points. With all of that said, American Airlines has four public levels and one secret one. The first level is gold, which requires 40,000 LP. If you have the status, you're going to get 40% more miles and also LPs, priority check-in and security, and also group four boarding, one free checked bag, and if something happens and you need to change your flight, you get same day standby priority. Okay, what about upgrades? You and up to eight passengers get complimentary access to preferred seats. So that means whether you want a window seat or a whole row for your family, then that works. You also get premium cabin upgrades for you and one companion that clear as early as 24 hours before the flight. On top of that, you and up to eight passengers can get complimentary main cabin extra seats, and this is going to happen at check-in. You also do get one world status, specifically Ruby, but I would temper your expectations, and you'll probably see why when we do a deeper dive later in the video. For level two, we have platinum, which is 75,000 LPs, pretty much everything we talked about and a bit more. 60% bonus points, priority check-in, security, and group three boarding, and also two free checked bags instead of one. Also priority handling, which is nice. Upgrades are also a bit better. You get complimentary main cabin extra for you and up to eight other passengers, but instead of at time of check-in, it's at time of booking. Good way to lock it in, especially if you have a big family or friend group. You're also eligible for premium cabin upgrades for you and one other passenger as early as 48 hours before the flight. The last one that's interesting is One World Sapphire, where you get extra bags, but also business class lounges. We'll get into this, but this is one of the sweet spots. Level three is Platinum Pro, which requires 125K LPs. Everything turned up a bit more. 80% more miles and loyalty points, priority check-in and group two boarding, three free checked bags plus priority handling, and also same day guarantee flight changes, which is useful if you are someone that wants to lock it in rather than do standby. Upgrades are technically the same, but for the premium cabin, you are higher up on the list. So if there's one seat and it's you as a Platinum Pro versus a Platinum, all other things being equal, you're probably gonna win. You also get One World Emerald, which is their top level, and it includes access to first class lounges. To me, this is another sweet spot, especially if you are getting the status through a shortcut. Level four is Executive Platinum, also known as EXP, and requires 200,000 LPs. This one does get some unique benefits. You're getting 120% more miles and points, group one boarding, and also premium cabin upgrades for you and one companion that can clear within 100 hours before the flight. Also of the public levels, you're on the top of the list. If you don't get upgraded, you're going to get free drink and free food in the main cabin for free, and this includes a standard alcoholic beverage and also any item on the menu. For One World, it's the same Emerald status since we're already on the top. The last level is Concierge Key. Oh my God, I wasn't sure this actually existed. This is the uh, insane. It's the Concierge Key, yeah. 
this is an invite only status for people that spend a lot of money with American Airlines. There's no set number and I think it does depend on your airport, but the number that goes around is about $50,000 spent on American Airlines flights. Not on their card and not on any flights, but their flights. Along with perks that you probably expect like upgrade priority over other elite members, you also get flagship first check-in, an Admiral's Club membership, and also access to flagship lounges. Okay, so outside of the last one of Concierge Key, what's the shortcut? As you'd expect from this channel, it's credit cards. You get one loyalty point per dollar spent on a card. So if you spend 40K, you're getting gold status, 75K platinum, 125K platinum pro, and 200K executive platinum. And reminder that this is spent on an American Airlines card per year. I guess you technically can mix and match American Airlines cards if needed, but either way, it is a lot of money. For businesses though, it might not be as unreasonable. If your service base might still be tough, but if you have to buy inventory or run ads or pay for AWS or AI compute or a host of other things. A lot of people look at the top line number and they kind of ignore the fact that there are a lot of other costs. As of filming, you have five options, the city American Airlines mile up, platinum, executive, business, and also the Barclays Aviator Red. All of these earn loyalty points at the same rate other than some promotions, so I would find the one that works for you. So for example, for the executive, you're getting up to 20,000 extra loyalty points, but you do need to do a lot of spend, and that card is pretty specific for lounge access. The business one is your best bet if you don't want to do expense reports, and the mile up if you don't want to pay an annual fee. On that note, if you want to learn about any cards and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksabby.com, and also down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, that the cards make sense for you, but otherwise, it is a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Also, if you are looking to pay a vendor that doesn't take credit cards, normally at least, there are strategies. So for example, Milio Payments is one of my favorite solutions that allows you to do exactly this. There is a 2.9% fee, but the status that you're getting and the American Airline miles might be worth that fee. Also, the fee is a write-off because you're doing it for business purposes, so it helps. It probably doesn't make sense unless you're using those miles to do first in business, but it's an option. It is something that we actively use ourselves for some of our vendors, and it definitely helps to get elite status and also intro bonuses. I guess technically we have been using it for Hyatt, but it works here as well. If you're interested, I'll put a link down below or go to asksebi.com slash milio. Outside of the status levels we talked about, they also have loyalty point levels. Super confusing, the easiest way to think of it is like these benchmarks that you're hitting where you're getting little bonuses, but they're not as good as the status itself. I cover a few that are going to be in normal people's strike zone, but it technically goes all the way up to 5 million. Okay, so for us normal people and normal business owners, what do we get? At 15K LPs, you're going to get a mini version of gold to wet your beak. So pretty much better boarding and also preferred seat coupons. A lot of these are a bit mid, so we'll try to be fast. Next level up is 60K, which I don't really think moves the needle. I guess status is nice, but there's other ways to get this. Pretty much the same thing for 100K, you get Avis President's Club, but there's a lot of other ways to either get it or match to it if you have other credit cards. 175K is where it starts to get interesting, but you only get to pick one of the following items. Some examples include system-wide upgrades, bonus miles, six one-day Admiral Club passes, 200 or 250 as a trip credit, depending on if you have one of their cards, gifting gold status to two people can be useful, and also 35K miles towards an experience. I'm not gonna go through most of the other ones because I think it's too much, but they pretty much take the same thing and just level it up. The only one that I might consider if you were already going towards EXP is the 250K level. Here you get two rewards, and a lot of the same options, but some are elevated, and also some other items like headphones. Okay, so there's a lot going on here. What are some of the sweet spots? For me, it's level two of platinum and level three with platinum pro. Those are the ones that offer the most interesting value prop. With platinum, you're getting main cabin extra at booking, which is super useful if you wanna lock it in. And again, if you have a big family, also one world lounges. For platinum pro, same day changes can be pretty clutch especially given how we travel and we do a lot of last minute changes. For me, I like the idea of gold, but I don't think it's worth the squeeze. For a lot of the tangible benefits, you can already kind of get them with credit cards. They are the ones that have annual fees, but if you value those perks, you're probably coming out ahead. Executive Platinum EXP is nice in practice, but it's just a lot of spend or a lot of flying. Even if you are a business that spends a ton, it might make sense to allocate it to something else, and we will cover that in a second. Before that, let's quickly go over One World status. 
One World is one of the big three airline networks. To me, it has some of the strongest airlines, including Cafe, Japan Airlines, Qantas, and Qatar. It also helps that they have some of the best first class lounges, and with their program, you can actually go into the lounges. So, for example, Singapore has an amazing first class, but you can only get in if you're flying Star Alliance first class or if you have status with Singapore. Even though they are part of Star Alliance, regardless of what level you have with them, unless you're flying first, you're not getting in. Back to One World, American Airlines Gold is One World Ruby, Platinum is Sapphire, Platinum Pro and Up is Emerald. For the most part, Ruby doesn't do that much. Basically, better check in experience and preferred seats. Sapphire is where it gets interesting. You get extra baggage for free, party baggage handling, party boarding, and also access to business class lounges. In my experience, these lounges have been pretty amazing, and I might be a bit biased because I mostly go through Hong Kong, and I like the cafe lounges. With Emerald status, you're getting fast track or party lane, and also access to both first and business class lounges. So a lot of airports have special lines. When we were in Japan, they had one that was on the side that led right to the lounge. You still have to go through a machine and they scan your stuff, but it's a lot nicer, faster, and you can bring water in some instances. I think it does need to be under a certain level, but I was allowed to bring a water bottle after taking a big sip. First class lounges are another big win, especially the big four that I mentioned, and Cafe Pacific has some pretty awesome ones if you are either connecting or going to Hong Kong. That includes the day suites and also the first class cabanas. If you're more of a domestic traveler, then probably a non-factor. With all of that said, is status with American Airlines worth it? I think it depends on how you value the benefits and also the opportunity cost. So for example, if you're running a ton of ads, you're technically sacrificing 3 or 4x to get 1x. On the other hand, if it's something like inventory, then arguably still 2x compared to 1x. I think if you have a lot of non-category spend, it's definitely worth considering. Another factor is the perks that you're optimizing for and whether they're going to help you for your home airport. Let's say you're based out of an American hub like Miami, even if you have platinum status, you're fighting an army of EXPs, executive platinums, and also concierge keys for upgrades. If your main focus is main cabin extras, then that's fine, but do not expect first class. On the other hand, if you're more focused on upgrades, you probably want to fly number two, three, or four most popular airline for your airport. So in my case, out of SFO, we fly Delta, which is number three with only 8% market share. United has 47%, and that means that all the consultants and people that fly every week pretty much have to fly them. Even when I had Platinum status, which is level 3 with United, I didn't really get upgraded because I was fighting a wall of global services, the secret version, and also level 4's 1Ks. Upgrades very much depend on your airport, so I would do a bit of research. If you are in a hub, I'd probably get one of their cards for free checked bags and either focus on another airline or just getting points. Again, if you want to learn about cards, we have links on the website, asksabby.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point, leave a key emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. Two questions, what are your thoughts on American status? And number two, any cool upgrade stories or any other cool stories at all? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favorite thumbs up, share this with a friend, consider subscribing, but otherwise hope you liked it. See you next time.